1956, a movie titled Julie emerged, offering a mix of funny, shocking, and sad moments that will keep you hooked till the end. Have you ever wondered how this film might have influenced someone's life or if there's a cherished memory associated with it? Stay tuned for some intriguing facts. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for more fascinating insights. The 1956 movie Julie presents a mix of suspense and drama within a storyline that revolves around a stewardess named Julie, played by Doris Day. In the film, she discovers that her husband, portrayed by Louis Jordan, has a dark past involving the murder of her first spouse. Despite the potential for a gripping thriller, the overall execution falls short due to some subpar acting, questionable editing, and unintentional humor in crucial scenes. Doris Day's performance in a non-comedic role adds a layer of intrigue to the film. The plot explores the complexities of human relationships, particularly in the face of a controlling and stalking husband. The movie touches on timeless themes, illustrating the frustration of authorities being unable to intervene. Julie was written and directed by Andrew L. Stone, who, despite not producing this particular film, considered it among his finest works. He, nominated once for an Academy Award for Best Screenplay, introduced a new kind of character to the screen in 1956, The Maniacal Husband as Stalker. The film addresses issues related to the failures of law enforcement in situations where women are in jeopardy, a topic that gained broader discussion in the 1970s. Doris Day's portrayal of a terrorized wife attempting to escape her murderous husband resonates with audiences even today. Stone's meticulous research is evident in the climactic scene where the character lands a passenger plane with the help of the control tower, a sequence based on factual accuracy. While the movie may not have received widespread acclaim during its time, it remains a noteworthy exploration of suspense and realism in the realm of mid-20th century cinema. Andrew L. Stone's dedication to his craft and his efforts to address societal issues within the framework of a thriller make this film a piece of cinematic history. This film, known simply as Julie, holds a distinct place in cinematic discussions, particularly among those interested in spotting movie mistakes. One notorious aspect is the frequent appearance of the boom microphone's shadow in various frames. Despite receiving unfavorable reviews, Julie proved financially successful for MGM. With a production cost under $800,000, the film grossed over $25 million. After accounting for expenses like publicity, advertising, and distribution, studio records reveal a profit of $604,000. During the on-location shoot, the lead, Doris Day, faced health issues, but adhered to her Christian science beliefs at the insistence of her husband, Martin Melcher, who produced the film. It wasn't until after completing the shoot that Day consulted her Beverly Hills doctor, discovering a significant ovarian tumor that necessitated a hysterectomy. These intriguing facets, sourced from a reputable website, shed light on the unique aspects surrounding Julie. The film's financial success and the health challenges faced during its production provide a behind-the-scenes perspective on this cinematic venture. All this information, as presented, is factual and directly from reliable sources. Doris Day's portrayal in Julie unveils unsettling parallels with her real-life marriage to trombonist Al Jordan. In her memoirs, Day disclosed enduring verbal and physical abuse during pregnancy, mirroring the toxic dynamics with her on-screen husband, Louis Jordan. The film offers a stark reflection of Day's tumultuous personal life. The gripping scene where Doris Day, playing a distraught stewardess, must land a commercial airliner solely guided by radio instructions foreshadows a similar moment in Airport 1975, performed by Karen Black. This intense scenario became a cinematic precedent showcasing Day's influential impact on subsequent films. During the on-location shoot, Doris Day developed a deep affection for the Carmel by the Sea Pebble Beach region near Monterey, California. This affection endured as she retired to Carmel in the late 1970s, residing there until her passing in 2019. Day's connection with the picturesque Northern California coast demonstrates the lasting influence the film had on her personal life choices. These revelations, drawn from reputable sources, offer an unvarnished glimpse into the profound impact Julie had on Doris Day's life. The film's reflection of her personal struggles and the enduring connection with the filming location adds layers of complexity to this cinematic venture.
Doris Day's role in the film, Julie offered a departure from her usual on-screen persona, showcasing a rare instance of her characters smoking cigarettes. A noteworthy detail as Day, who faced a cancer scare during the production, eventually quit smoking on her doctor's advice. In her candid memoirs, she revealed the strains behind the scenes, detailing a close friendship with co-star Louis Jordan that triggered jealousy from her producer husband, Martin Melcher. This echoed the complex character dynamics portrayed in the film, adding a layer of personal resonance. Interestingly, the making of Julie played a role in overcoming one of Day's personal fears flying. Despite her initial apprehension, she confronted this fear head-on during the film's production, marking a significant personal triumph for the actress. These revelations, sourced from a reputable website, provide a candid look into the unique aspects of the movie that go beyond its cinematic narrative. Day's battles, both personal and professional, intertwine with the making of the film, offering a nuanced perspective on this particular cinematic venture. Listed among the 100 most enjoyably bad movies ever made in John Wilson's book, this film, often known simply as Julie, holds a unique place in cinematic discussions. Doris Day's mother, Alma Sophia von Kappelhoff, makes a brief appearance playing cards with Barry Sullivan at the golf course clubhouse. Notably, this production had the lowest budget of all the films featuring Doris Day, standing at 785000 Arwen Productions, the Day Martin Melcher Company, aimed to minimize costs for this venture. Sourced from a reputable website, these details offer insights into the film's distinctive recognition and the involvement of Day's mother. The financial constraints and Day's family connection underscore the pragmatic approach taken in bringing Julie to the screen. Doris Day initially resisted taking on the role in the film, finding uncomfortable parallels between her character, Lyle Benton, and the challenging dynamics of her past marriages. The character hit close to home, resembling aspects of her relationships with Al Jordan and George Weidler. To ensure authenticity in her portrayal, Day underwent training from actual Transocean Airlines pilots, learning the intricacies of maneuvering the plane's controls realistically. This hands-on approach added a layer of authenticity to her performance. In preparation for her role as a stewardess, Day dedicated three weeks to rigorous stewardess training. This commitment highlighted her dedication to portraying the role convincingly and contributed to the film's realism. These details, gleaned from a reliable source, shed light on Doris Day's initial reluctance, the meticulous preparation for her role, and the commitment to authenticity that shaped her performance in this cinematic venture. Martin Melcher, the producer behind this film, was known for his cost-cutting strategies. In a savvy move, he secured a product placement deal with Chrysler Motors, ensuring that Doris Day's projects prominently featured their automobiles. This arrangement extended throughout her career, notably in the Doris Day show, maintaining a consistent partnership until her retirement. During pre-production, Doris Day's commitment to authenticity led her to receive airplane cockpit tips. However, an unexpected incident occurred when the car transporting her was struck by a teenage hot rodder. Despite the potential severity, no one was injured, and Day remained remarkably unfazed by the accident. These insightful details, sourced from a reputable website, unveil the pragmatic approach of Martin Melcher in managing production costs and Doris Day's unwavering commitment to realism. They provide a unique perspective on the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the film, shedding light on the business decisions and unforeseen incidents that shaped this cinematic venture.